welcome to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Nwoko and thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Today we're going to be talking about alternative home gardening solutions using a growing system. But before we get into our conversation today, I just want to remind you at home that we have a competition running where you can stand a chance to win your very own growing system. And all you have to do is go onto our Facebook page on the competition and comment about what type of crop you'd like to grow onto the system. And the winner will be announced in the next gardening series episode. So let's get into today's show. I'm joined by none other, Cass from Home Growers, who will explain to us what a growing solution is. Cass, thank you so much for joining us. Always great to be here and I'm glad that we can present the Grow Barrel. Absolutely, I'm so excited. So just explain to us what the grow barrel does. Because the grow barrel is probably the finest growing system that you can get. It's a soil-based solution, so that's okay. the one thing that people need to understand. Okay. It has an integrated worm farm. Now, there's some magic around that because what <laughs> happens is the soil has to be kept in the best condition possible. And the only way you're going to do that, and you can't beat nature, and yeah. that is to use worms. So you have red wiggler worms that are inside the barrel. You feed them by taking your kitchen scraps and you put it inside the barrel and they munch away on those scraps and they populate that in the soil with highest possible nutrients. And the plants that are inside here benefit often from those nutrients. And the runoff, when you water this barrel, the runoff runs all the way through and it collects in the lower trough, which is re-harvested. You can take it water harvesting process yeah. and basically water your vegetables again and the whole con cycle continues. So it's highly nutritious, it's very effective, mm. it's water harvesting, it's organic, there are no <laughs> chemicals, yeah. you've got a worm farm in there. Yeah. There is, honestly in my opinion, there is nothing better than this. So just to explain on this kitchen scrap, you're saying it's anything from eggshells, tea bags, you just slot them in here, and where do the worms come from? Okay, so very good question, and it's, I'm glad you're asking them in that order because when we talk about kitchen scraps, yeah. we refer to everything that is not acidic. Okay. So we do not put in meat, we do not put in fish, we do not put in bones, we do not put in citrus, mm. we do not put in onions, we do not put in bread. Some people mm. don't and do put in uh, banana skins. Okay. I personally don't. Um, they decompose slowly anyway, okay. but the worms go and break them down. Now, the interesting fact about a red wiggler specifically mm. is they are the most incredible little creatures. So what they do is they can pick up the electromagnetic discharge from plants. So as soon as they feel that, and they can sense from the soil and the root system that the plant is no longer producing an electromagnetic charge, the uh, red wiggler worm goes up and eats and disposes of the decaying matter and puts it back into the soil as fresh food. So awesome. that is what's remarkable. So a lot of people get squeamish and they go, oh, I don't want worms in there. They go, I don't want worms in their food source. Yes. But you will not get worms. They live beneath the soil. Actually, shy. You know, you can talk and you can go around, we'll look at this barrel and I can scratch the surface of the soil. And as we scratch, you'll see the little red wigglers. And what will happen is they will disappear because they don't want to see you. Yes. And they don't like light. So oh. they're always in the barrel. Okay. Um, they are remarkable. And does this barrel come in only blue? Let's say I want an orange, you know, barrel, red looking barrel. Uh, does it come in various sizes, uh, uh, colors? Yes, another good question as well. Uh, the barrel comes in many colors. Okay. okay. But we only work with two colors. We work with the blue and we work with the green. And the reason being is that the blue, blue and the green barrel are yeah. the only two barrels that are considered to be food safe barrels. Okay. In terms of now, if you understand the history where the barrel came from, in terms of America and Europe, those were the first few areas that started recycling barrels in terms of making them uh, into farming, growing units. Yeah. That's where the movement started. And there are various laws around the world that govern the usage of a green and a blue barrel specifically. They are termed as single-use barrels. You can't use them more than once for transportation. Okay. Whereas the other barrels, the red, the brown, the silver gray, um, and the yellow, yeah. those are used for many other substances. Hazardous stuff. Very, absolutely. Okay. And a lot of people come here and they go, oh, I'd like a yellow barrel, look pretty in my garden, a red <laughs> barrel. So I say yeah. to them, you must understand, when you look at colors, okay, red and yellow are warning signs. It's telling you, keep away from me, I'm dangerous. Yes. It's like a robot. When you're going in your car and you're driving, you're heading towards a traffic light to change colors. Yes. Orange means be careful, red means stop. There's a yes. reason for that. 
Yes. It's the same with the barrels. The barrels works exactly the same way. And the FDA, if you go read about it, the, in America, the Food and Drug Administration, okay. they closely monitor and watch in terms of the shipping liners in okay. terms of moving of single-use barrels being green and blue. So okay. that's why we will only use green, green and, blue. and blue. And to top it off, we only use brand new barrels. We, okay. don't, we don't recycle or upcycle. And the reason being is that we need to know that if we are giving you a barrel, we know that there's never been anything in it that's toxic. Absolutely. And that is very, very important. Because we're growing our own food, 100%. which goes into our uh, stomachs, you know? Yeah. So that's an empty barrel. This is one that's like fully kitted with crops already growing. Yeah, it looks so stunning because I can already see different type of vegetables here. So just explain what this barrel has and um, yeah, and just, and also so, the soil, I, I suppose it's potting soil as well, right? So what we do is we do a, a mix, again, only on organic. Okay. We do a mix of uh, potting, okay. mix and uh, composting. And by turning it up into, this, into, into a mix before we feed it into the barrel, the reason why we're using composting is because that is a beautiful blend for those red wigglers to eat as well. Mm. So once you've thrown the soil in, etc., those guys are eating already. Okay. And they're creating beautiful future nutrients for your soil system mm. and also what you need to understand is when you populate your barrel for the first time with soil gravity also plays an effect okay so as you've loaded it, it's very full yes and after a few weeks you see that the soil is actually dropping and that's only because mm. gravity is pulling it down so you have to top up as well that you've got to do okay but in terms of the varieties that we got here i mean we've got different types of mints we've yes. got uh, we've got different uh, basils we have varieties of it we've got lettuces we've got spinach we've got blood sorrel We've got a whole host yeah. of incredible, incredible herbs and vegetables. And they honestly just carry on growing. They really and truly do. What we're still going to do with this particular one and, and as many others that we have at Home Growers, mm. we're going to get them ready for season. Okay. So we're going to get tomatoes soon. You're going to get eggplants. You're going to get everything. You're going to see an explosion of color and you're mm. not going to see the blue. Now, the one thing like at my <laughs> house, I've got a blue barrel and people say to me when they come in, they say, no, I don't want blue, I want green. So I said, you know, I'll be honest with you, my first choice is a blue, a blue barrel. And I'll tell you why I like blue. Okay. Because when the green is green, there's a mm. contrast and it stands out. So you see this explosion of absolute beautiful greenery. Now, if it was green on green, mm. you don't really see the green, yeah. which is also very special. So, but it's a really a remarkable, remarkable system. So this one here, we might be lucky to show you. I don't know if we will. As I lift this open, we might be able to see some worms. There's a, there's a baby worm that's in there. Okay. But you're not really going to see it too well. They're um, probably just but they sleeping. Crawl up and they don't <laughs> like, they, they'll come back later. As we throw food in, they'll land up coming through. Yeah. And they'll end up harvesting the food, putting it back into the food source, and they are happy. So a couple of questions, right? Uh, you said the grow barrel takes soil, right? How many bags of soil or compost would one need to fill up? And when you're filling up the bags, is there a waiting period before you start planting? Okay. So when we set up the grow barrel, we take it as an empty unit. Yeah. We remove the cap. Okay. We take newspaper, but the non-glossy newspaper. Okay. We make little balls out of the newspaper and we shove it into the top of the barrel. Till it's full. Correct. Well, close to full. Okay. And then, only then, because inside this pipe, there are holes. Yes, I can see that. And those are the exit points for the worms to get in and out into the soil baseline. Mm. So when we pour soil in here, we don't want the pipe to fill up. And the reason being is we want easy of passage, ease of passage for those little worms to get around. Yeah. So that's what, but they'll munch away. They love newspapers, they really do. So we then pour in the uh, soils, the mix that we do. And we're talking around about nine bags of potting mix or, or potting mixture composting uh, mix solution okay. inside this. And we just pour it in okay. and that is, that is it. And then you so stop planting. So you pour it till it's full to the brim. That's right. There's newspaper in here. That's right. And then what happens? And then once it's all settled, we then start the process of putting in our seedling plugs. So okay. we end up putting seedlings in every one of these pockets. Mm. And that naturally starts taking effect. The other thing which is beautiful about the barrel, which is really special, because it's 365 degrees as a complete circle is, you're getting different degrees of heat that hit the barrel at different times of the day. Mm. So a lot of people say, but what happens if I get more shade or less shade? It doesn't really make a difference because mm. the barrel itself has got different facets of where the light hits it. So you can take this one here and you put your hand there, it's cool. Yeah. But if yes, I go it to is the cool. side there and you'll find that that is warm. Actually, it is. That's right. So what happens yeah. is you get a buildup of this magnificent moisture inside the barrel. 
the root systems grow towards it. Okay. And that's why certain veg will grow so much better at different parts of the barrel. And wow. the root systems find it. Nature is magnificent. We yeah. can't teach nature anything. Nature will teach us. Just yeah. by how, like the worms look after this entire system. Mm. Same with the way the roots grow. It is wow. the most remarkable. You'll find that we have mint growing, but the mint never ever was never planted in a pocket, but it planted on that side. And the rooting and system found out where to go because the conditions were perfect. And all of a sudden you have this magnificent growth. The beauty of nature. It is absolutely spectacular. And the one thing which you would also notice is that you can see and you can sense it, where you won't on camera, unfortunately, and in the exposure, yeah. is the scent. You just rub the leaves and you get this magnificent scent yeah. that you get off there. The aroma is absolutely yeah. incredible. What you also have, you have a brilliant, brilliant ecosystem right before your eyes. You'll get your predator insects okay. that will come and eat the insects that cause damage to your plants. Mm. So, for example, your so if we've got uh, like fennel, aphids, that's right. So fennel white will flies. Grow, the uh, ladybugs will, will lock, rock up and they will end up feasting on the aphids. And the cycle continues. Yeah. The whole thing about this beautiful system is again is like when I push and talk around anything about home growing. Keep as far away as you can from chemicals and toxins in terms mm. of pesticides. Try and let nature do what nature does best. And nature's right. working well here. There's, yeah. no growth, there's no growth hormones in here. There's no chemicals in here. You're not going to get anything better anywhere else than what you have here. If you take this and you rub your hands through it and you smell your hands, the oils, the, 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 the Ooh, essential oils yeah. that come out of there. I mean, the aromatherapy that one will derive from yeah. oils coming from what you've got in a grow barrel yes. is remarkable. So I just want to find out how do you maintain the plants? So firstly, I can see we've got a very lovely looking stand here and with some uh, sprinklers. So I suppose this is for watering. However, can one use a watering can or when we purchase the growing barrel, does it come with this? Just explain to Perfect. us how we uh, give it uh, some water. Okay, so the grow barrel doesn't come with a, a watering system such as this. Okay. This was one of, and again, so with home growers, we have such a great movement of customers who come and see us. Yeah. This was made by one of our customers because he has a grow barrel, he loves his grow barrel, and he oh, went wow. and made this for us that we can put on display. So, oh, wow. but, and it's really, you plug your hose pipe in it and it's got all the spray jets and it basically sprays your, your barrel. Okay. But for a grow barrel, you don't need such an instrument. You take your water from a watering can okay. or a hose pipe and you water, and I'll show you on the empty one because it's easier. You okay. just water around the sides. That's all you do. You water around the sides and then you can take a sprayer and spray the pockets. Because remember, the water is going to pull down anyway. Yes. So spraying there is just really going to cool the leaves off. But in terms of the nutrients and the hydration and so on, it's going to come from the top. And then you put a bucket on the a ground. bucket under there which comes with it. And it's okay. full, 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 full of nutrients. Yeah. You pull it out and you pour it back in. Ah, so you recycle Correct. the water. There's total, there's total usage of water recycling. Yeah. There's harvesting of water. Yeah. That's why, you know, it's a, if you've got areas where we don't have and we've got issues with water supply and so mm. on, this is your solution. So where do you keep the growing barrel? Is it on the patio or do you just have to put it outside in full sunlight like this? It really doesn't make a difference. I mean, it really, we've got uh, barrels on property, which you've seen before, where it's in mostly shade. Yeah. It, it performs incredibly well. Okay. We've got some that are in direct sunshine and okay. they perform incredibly well. Right. So it really doesn't make a difference because like I said, it's a 360 degree system. Yes. It's not going to be in sun the entire day. Yes. Because you get a canopy, as you can see, I've got a beautiful canopy that grows. So what happens is you've got all these that are getting shade. Yes. So even if it's in direct sun, yes. these guys that are doing incredibly well, they are providing essential shade to those that need the shade. Wow. You know, so it's a very, very simple and a very effective system to harvest and grow your own vegetables at home. So wow. this is what the, the solution offers you. Great. And still on the crops maybe then, let's say now I am finished, I've plucked so many spinach leaves and mm, I'm tired of spinach now, I want to maybe grow lettuce. What happens? Do I just remove the spinach plant and then put in a lettuce? Or uh, do we have to change the whole system in terms of the soil once again? You know, how often do we have to reuse the soil uh, before we could put in another uh, plant inside? In terms of changing soil, there's no need for that. Okay. You may have to top up. 
but okay. there's no need to change because as long as your worm farm is healthy yes then there's no need to change because they're keeping it it's like if i look anywhere around and you look in your gardens wherever how often are you digging pools out of of soil and putting new soil not in? quite no often one does, right <laughs> because the soil is natural and it's perfect well, it yeah. should be perfect this is the same system it doesn't make a difference so the thinking is identically the same you've got an ecosystem here and you're changing our veg you can see the lower pockets here we've got uh, these are going to change now for season yes um, so those are going to be plucked out and put new and new seedlings in so for okay. example if i take and it's i haven't got celery on the front here but um on the side i don't have on this one either but let's say for example you one was going to harvest you know you would either cut with your with your scissor yes or your break off and you would have your fresh fresh uh, uh, veg that you get now leaves get about that size and you've got to see the leaves and them full growth yeah um and you harvest from there and straight to the kitchen wash it into the into onto the dinner table um but if you're going to start fresh chop this out take a little garden fork stick it in and remove it and start again uh -huh. That's what we're do. so now we're going to take this piece and i'm going to feed it to our little friends because let them also deserve oh wow something. i can so help you there in. yeah let's open that up and we just pop that in and nothing must ever get wasted. Nothing must ever get wasted. Get straight in there. Even if you've got dead, dying leaves, like we've yeah. got in this one here, so we'll pluck a few off. Let it go in. Feed so your friends. in there, it will decompose. That's it. Beautifully. It goes back in. So the, is it safe to say that the, during the day, the worms come out, so they, they come fertilize out, the, the soil right. in this whole entire ecosystem, and then they go back into their house? When they're hungry, they go back up and they eat, and then they go back in. I mean, if I had wow. to brush away some of the soil now, we will actually see little red wigglers running around. Uh, yeah. You will see them. They'll be everywhere. If I scratch around here, we'll find them. <laughs> this thing has got, and the nice thing about they don't overpopulate, which is yeah. that their population size will be healthy enough for what the barrel can sustain. So, and what food source is available. So that's the other upside with regards to the colony of the red wiggler worms that you have. What I like about this grain barrel, it's, it's quite steady. Yes. You know, the fact that we've got the sand in here, we've got the various plants in here, but it's still Very quite steady. steady. So it's good. I'm sure it can withstand, you know, very strong winds as well. Ah, oh, this is fantastic. So this is what we grow, talk about when you're saying growing your own food in minimal space vertically. Um, and again, using no pesticides, no insecticides, you know, nothing goes to waste in here. Yellow leaves, we pluck them back into the house and the worms come back. Absolutely. You know, the mag magnificent thing about this grow barrel again is there's 67 varieties of vegetables you can grow, vegetables or herbs. Okay. The top we would always try and keep for the lea the leafy bigger bushes. So ideally like your big tomatoes and whatever, you'd like to put in the top fennel. So you get this beautiful canopy, beautiful deep big growth coming out of the top. That's what you want to do. And the smaller types, when I say smaller types, because your, your, your spinaches are not necessarily small. The leaves can get that size. Yes. Your spring onions, your, your celery leaves are huge. So you have all this available, which is magnificent. We've got cabbages growing in season where the heads of the cabbage are like soccer balls, unbelievable, mm. out of a pocket. So the reality is you can put anything in there. So mm. in the ones that we've done before and we've done on that side where you saw earlier, your onions go into the top. Because once an onion grows, and it will grow successfully in here, but mm. you'll never get it out. So the onions that you don't want to put in there, uh, beetroot mm. you don't want to put in here, you want to put it into the top. Uh, anything that is a root system that you want to pluck out, mm. rather leave on the top, not into a pocket, because you will not get it out the pocket. Okay. Um, but it's a great system. And I think just like once again, it's coming into home growers, you're buying a fully uh, kitted uh, barrel, you, you, you know, you've got, you've got all the, the, the growing medium, the seedlings as well that you want to farm and you're good to go. Absolutely. How often would one need to water the growing barrel? So that's a question that people ask all the time and I always say use the finger test to stick your finger in the soil and if it's moist and damp then it's fine. And again like you felt earlier, yes. the temperature. Remember the, the humidity and the condensation that you're getting inside the barrel from the shift of temperature is creating its own condensation and, and, and moisture inside the barrel. Yeah. So it's never going to be dry, 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 dry. And you'll see that even always be moist. always going to be moisture inside there. Um, and it's just one of those fan fantastic things. I just saw this now whilst we were talking and I want to point this out to you. So this is an eggplant, okay? Okay. And for season, they obviously do leaves now. Yes. So now this is back coming back to life and we're going to have eggplant coming out uh, quite again. soon yeah so that's amazing and that's from last season this is amazing Cass um sure I'm just so surprised at how easy and efficient it looks like it doesn't take a lot of space but yet you said 67 varieties, 67 varieties that could be grown meter, in less than one square meter now you wow. think about it I mean a person doesn't even have to take a measuring tape 
just close your eyes and just 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 imagine <laughs> if you had to take and you had to plant out in your garden or wherever it was and you had to put out 67 and you put out one like pace of step at a time yeah how far and how much space are you using for 67 varieties a couple of meters i could tell you and yeah and the other side is how much work how much work does it take to keep 67 veg healthy mm. this is you know you might as well be watering a pot plant <laughs> You got you got yeah. a form with the whole energy and efforts of a pot plant with one person. That's what's amazing. That's what's beautiful. Oh, Cass, this is fantastic. Thank you so much for coming onto the show today and explaining this growing barrel. Um, we've got a competition running, so I'm sure people will just start engaging because now they could physically see that, you know, we have spinach, we have various different lovely looking crops here that could be grown um, with ease, simple, uh, minimal maintenance rather. Absolutely. And, you know, you water it based on how humid the, the soil is. That's right. And I think what I'd like to do is, I mean, as we start having you know, future episodes and that down in the line, let's get feedback from viewers and let them Absolutely. say, I'd like to see tomatoes growing. I mean, we'll take the challenge. We'll put tomatoes in. And then we'll, every <laughs> time to time, we'll give them a snapshot and say, look how well these guys oh, are it's growing. growing. You know, so be part of the journey. Yeah, and as opposed to the person that wins, it'll also be nice if they could share their story Absolutely. of the different crops and varieties that they've been planting. Thank you so much, Cass, for your time today. Always it was phenomenal pleasure. having you. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this segment of the gardening series. As you've heard from Cass, this is a growing barrel that can grow 67 different varieties. And and you just only need one person to manage it. Water it as and when it needs to by testing the humidity of the soil and come on to home growers because they'll show you how to set up this entire system with the growing medium, the potting soil, how we're going to get the plants inside and how the worms really work and regenerate the soil that exists inside and you could grow it outside um, uh, in your ha home garden or underneath the patio whichever space you decide to put it in trust me this growing barrel will give you food for a year's supply so a reminder to just please um, uh, enter the competition that we have running because you could win yourself a growing barrel right here from home growers and um, they will provide you with all the assistance that you need to just get this growing barrel set up and successfully growing your own vegetables in your own home thank you so much for watching the show and tune in for our next episode coming on next week thank you so much <laughs>